The gold medal match in men's football at the Napoli 2019 Universiade is here. Brazil versus the defending and six-time champions, Japan. Hello from the Stadio Arecchi in Salerno on the last day of what has been a fabulous fortnight of football at this event, sometimes referred to as the Olympic Games for student-athletes. We've seen great goals, spectacular action, no little controversy. Penalty shootout drama, 12 teams started out in the men's event and now only two remain. After Italy got its hands on the bronze earlier with a penalty shootout win over the Russian Federation. And uh, following on from the Democratic People's Republic of Korea's gold in the women's event, it's time for the 18th Summer University Ad Men's Football Competition to be decided on a glistening golden evening on the Campania coastline. The football mad nation that is Brazil has never had a men's team in the Universiad final before today, let alone 1-1 one -one for Japan. The gold medal memories are still fresh from Chinese Taipei two years ago when a 1-0 win over France and the Blue Samurai, a sixth crown. Japan are the most successful nation in the 40-year history of Universiad men's football with six golds and three bronzes. Ominously for Brazil, they have never lost a final. It's a stunning record, but Brazil will feel that if anyone can stop the running run, they can. Three straight wins for Brazil in this tournament after the opening draw with France. Goals from Dos Santos and Eduardo Luiz saw off the Russian Federation in the semi-final. Four matches played for Japan, three wins in regulation, one penalty shootout success. That came in heart-stopping fashion against the Italians. 12 goals scored. This is a very strong, mobile and capable team. Carrying on in this fabulous Japanese tradition of success at the age-level tournaments. So, we know the identity of the bronze medalists and that is the host nation, wonderful scenes of jubilation as they won the penalty shootout against the Russians, having been on the receiving end 48 hours ago in the semi-final. It was Japan who were celebrating that night. And we wait and see who would emerge the stronger here in this gold medal matchup. But a terrific crowd in and both nations well represented. We saw a sea of yellow outside the Arecchi Stadium here in Salerno with the Brazilian fans flooding in. But uh, a good number of the Japanese flags around this uh, fabulous arena too, supporting the uh, land of the rising sun. Men's football first introduced to the Universiad program in Mexico City back in 1979. It then skipped the next two editions, but it's been a, a permanent fixture since Kobe in Japan in 1985. The uh, first Japanese success came 10 years on from that when the, the event was also staged in Japan in Fukuoka. The triumphs have, have followed in 2001, 2003, 2005, that famous three in a row, 2011 and of course 2017 nice camaraderie in the stands here celebrating this uh, world festival of sport amongst student athletes aged between 17 and 28 the Fédération Internationale du Sport Universitaire or International University Sports Federation that's FISU was founded in 1949, 174 member nations. It's all about bringing young people together to celebrate sport. So we welcome the teams to the field then. And uh, our team of officials also. But this is an event really which harks back even prior to the first official university had the first World Student Games organized in Paris back in 1923. Ten years after FISU was founded in 1949, the first ever Universiade was hosted here in Italy in Turin. 
those first games involved just under 1500 athletes now there are almost 8,000 back here in Italy it's the 22 out on the pitch that take to the stage tonight though the final day of the football and the penultimate day of these games as a whole a whole swathe of changes in the Japanese starting lineup seven in all they really believe in rotation it's the way they've organized this competition so far the idea is to have two equally strong first teams if you will Fisu anthem Gaudamus impeccably observed inside the uh, Stadio Arecchi tonight, just ahead of the men's football final. It's been a long wait, it's been a nervy wait today for these two teams. Taken in the earlier match, Italy against the Russian Federation. And that was drama filled. Italy two up. Russian Federation hit back in the uh, second half. We went to penalties. Two misses from the Russia team. And that meant Italy at last got their hands on the bronze medal. Well, he's got a, a big role model, the Brazilian skipper in Alison Becker, the, the br brilliant Liverpool keeper. But uh, Matthias Kaiser has had a, a decent tournament thus far. Very good shot stopper. And he'll have to be on top of his game tonight here against this uh, capable attacking unit. They're full of technique and they play the right way, the Japanese. So skipper for Japan tonight. That's Rio Hatate from Norway. And Ohit Sagi will be in charge. One change for Brazil. And, uh, they withdraw the striker, Alex de Alcantara, and added Matias Vasconcelos to the uh, midfield. So, by the looks of things, the Rafael dos Santos will play on his own up front. But they have good creativity in there with the Luis and Gustavo Gaetano. Seven changes for Japan. In come Nakamura, Tanaka, Takamine, Mitoma, Ueda, Kono, and uh, the new skipper. Rayo Hatate. Ariel Mamade knows his play as well from the Selgado de Oliveira University on the far side of Guanabara Bay in Rio de Janeiro. And Noya and Matsumoto has taken on a, an advanced role with the Japanese Federation, which takes in responsibility for the Universiad teams. They have good consistency throughout the, uh, the pyramid in Japan. And their teams, men and women at all age levels, play a recognizable form of football. They play on the ground, they play quick, high tempo stuff, a lot of movement, a lot of mobility. And it all makes for a, an intriguing mix here tonight against the Brazilians who so have steel as well as flair. We're all set here in Salerno. Here we go. The second Universiad football final for the men to be contested on Italian soil seventh to involve Japan but the first to feature Brazil we know about their success at the age level competitions 
those five-time FIFA World Cup winners won the under 20 World Cup the under 17 World Cup the Olympic title the Universiad gold medal would complete the set early free kick there is uh, Vashon Salos tries to get involved now then the forward thinking fullback Wanderson de Cunha wearing two the right back he had a terrific match before fading slightly in the semi-final as Russia came on strong in the second half he ended up clinging on for dear life actually towards the end of the semi it was a, a rip-roaring contest between Japan and Italy and right down to the wire shame someone had to lose that one actually but I believe for Japan the Italians did lose it so wearing 18 is playing that early pass through that's Yuki Yamamoto on the left hand side of the defense coming for Sonoda Mitoma. Tries to play the ball down the line, involving Yamamoto again. Coached them very well so far through the competition. Part of it has been problem solving these young athletes themselves out on the pitch. forwards rather aimlessly actually by Hataka Nakamura who started the quarter-final victory over the South Koreans Tate and Ogoshiwa on target there in a 2-0 victory Tate back wearing the armband tonight Ogoshiwa starts on the bench there'll be big rotation in the second half though with four substitutes allowed certainly if we Heading for penalties, that's when the attacking changes tend to be made. Karu Mitoma. Yeah. The flag did arrive. Brazil just standing their ground there. Rayon Yamahara. So just called offside. So always a big draw for football. Men's and women's competitions at the Universiad. 40 year history of the men's competition. The women's event was added slightly later in Buffalo in 1993. Ten nations and one gold in the men's event. So Brazil looking to be the 11th. There's a, a nice geographical spread as well with uh, Spain, and France, Italy, Ukraine, Czech Republic, and Russia, or indeed the old Soviet Union back in 1987, all representing Europe. Mexico won in 79 at home. Democratic People's Republic of Korea won in. 1985 in Kobe in Japan. The Korea from south of the border won in 1991. That was when the event was staged in Sheffield in England. So Japan having plenty of the ball. As we suspected they might. Good bit of skill there, but Toma was dispossessed. The concentration levels are always right up there for the Japanese. Picked up by Rion Yamahara. 
pass forward from Tetsushi Yamakawa. Brazil with a chance to pump the ball long. Wanderson well forward. Couldn't bring the ball under his spell. So instead it's transferred on to Rio Hatate. Luis, scorer in the semi-final victory for the Brazilians, comes back to the goalkeeper. Starting with three at the back here, the Brazilians. Resende. It's very much like uh, Wanderson de Cunha. He's actually been moved up to play alongside Rafael dos Santos. He played it right back in the semi final, and the fine right back performance it was as well. It's very much in the modern style, overlapping, and an extra source of attack. Shot hit Miliarance. Yamahara. Just eludes Rafael dos Santos, who's not been involved thus far. Five is Tetsushi Yamakawa. Brazil holding those defensive lines. Garu Mitoma now. Well played. Mitoma still going. Spilled there by the goalkeeper. But he was helped out there by Raman Resende. First little break. It was a Japan player. Wide left midfielder Karu Mitoma Played through the middle. Yeah, nice run. He's going to play just a little bit further advanced of Rio Hatate. Yeah, he just breached the line. Right call. So Matthias Kaiser to lift the ball forward. One by Tanaka. Resende clips it over the top. A flag up against Wanderson de Cunha. Definitely playing in that more advanced role. Just two in the Brazil squad. Not from Salgado, Salgado de Oliveira University. Igor Miliarance from UNIP and Tiago Pina from Anaguera. It makes sense, really, to, to take a, a good, strong look at the, the top university team in the country. Salgado de Oliveira fit that bill for Brazil. Mitoma. Allowed Wanderson to block him. Rayon Yamahara. Well, they like to develop players with wide range of skills and ability to slot in at any position on the field. Yamahara on the left-hand side, he played it right back in the semi-final. But they all have recognisable characteristics, all good on the ball and just good awareness. It's a case really of not really 
being railroaded into one particular set position. Of your uh, pigeonhole then for your entire career. Yamahara. Gives it to Tomoki Takamine. Nakamura plays it back in field. Then the little burst. Kazuya Kono there. Needy defending. A ball into the area. The second ball is dealt with as well by the Brazilians. Challenge was just a little late, so the danger subsides for the time being. Gustavo Gaetano there, caught by Hataka Nakamura. But this is a big, big deal for Japan. Uh, the Universidad tradition is well known in men's football, and of course, this event comes a year shy of the Tokyo Olympic Games. bronze at the Olympics back in 1968 in Mexico City the blue samurai of Japan and how they want a big showing at home what a, a splendid Olympics that'll be of course this is the uh, meeting of two nations the last two Olympics the Rio games of Brazil of 2016 seems like it was just yesterday doesn't it but time flies Another box ticked for Brazil in terms of their trophy cabinet, winning the first Olympic title. Stretching Japan for the first time in the match here. We've got Dos Santos in the middle, and Anderson's in there as well. Now only as far as Eduardo Luiz. A good long way out that from Eduardo Luiz. Unable to get any direction really on the shot. Approaching quarter past nine local time. The thermometer still peaking at 23 degrees pitch sides. Delightful ball over the top. Flagger stay down. Resende with a very good foot in. Super defending that from Ramon Resende. They are say Oeda just about breached the line there and stayed on side. So Tetsushi Yamakawa. The Yamahara. There's the runner, Rio Hotate. Gives it back to Yamahara. Cleared on the edge of the area by Victor Costa. And Wanderson got back there, trying to feed it into Dos Santos. Telegraph the pass there, picked up by the backtracking Mitoma. And they do work very hard when they don't have the ball, Japan. Yamahara, he's having a lot of the ball down the left-hand side. And looks there for Ayase Oeda. Just too near the goalkeeper, Matthias Kaiser. Japan's victory two years ago in Chinese Taipei was at the expense of the French. Good advantage played there by the referee. Prior to that, the uh, French had won in 2013 in Kazan, Italy, in Guangzhou 2015. Toma. Well, the referee given no choice there but to award the free kick, but he is intent, I think, on letting things flow, and that's good to see. Perhaps under instructions, 
and Rohit Zaghi of Norway. But no advantage was forthcoming there for Japan, so another free kick on this left-hand side for them. Tomoki Takamine will take it. Hoisted into the back post, well defended again. Yeah, difficult one to get right that for Victor Costa. Did just enough to, to put off the attacking player, so it comes over Victor Costa. Yeah, a, a glancing blow off the, the player at the back stick. Danica. No score thus far in a tight gold medal match. 16 minutes gone in Salerno at the Stadio Arecchi, home of Salernitana. We're about an hour's drive down the coast from Naples here in Salerno. Beautiful port city. That's the sort of place that would be a jewel in the crown of any other region or country, but there's just so much going on really in Campania. Positano and Ravello just down the road. Sorrento, beautiful Sorrento, just round from the Bay of Naples and the islands of Capri and Elba. It's been a, a magnificent university ad here. So much to admire with the sport and the local surroundings as well. Yamahara, Kurumitoma now. Yamahara takes it on. Really good, bright attacking play from the, uh, well, today, the left sided fullback. That's uh, Kuro Mitoma. A nice spread of educational establishments uh, represented in the Japanese party. Mitoma is one of four players from the University of Tsukuba. Zende turns away from trouble. And Victor Costa sends the ball over the top towards the onrushing Wanderson de Cunha. Safely out of play. Brazil. Tested Koto Abe at all yet, Japan's keeper. Doing all the running, the team in blue. Kaoru Mitoma, great little dribble there. So Mitoma's through, he's beaten another, it's still Mitoma. Finally, the challenge comes in. Oh, that was looking like an extra special run there from Kaoru Mitoma. But Japan have recycled it. Still have bodies in the box. Sliced away by Rizende. Really bright run that by Kaoru Mitoma. Thought he was going to go all the way. Drift pass one, then the second. Oh, fabulous challenge at the uh, last possible moment, though. So Japan corner. One-way traffic so far in this gold medal match. There's the corner. Plenty of yellow shirts stationed on the edge of that six-yard box. Second header, rolls it clear. And that's a, a useful turn from Matano Gustavo. Back come Japan again, though. And the pass in for Rayo Hatate. He's offside. Well, Hatate one of the skippers and he's not playing the goalkeeper tends to wear the armband koto abe so although brazil have never been in the final we know all about the uh, semis 
first reached the last four 20 years ago in Palma in Mallorca. But were beaten by their Spanish host. Ended up winning the bronze on penalties at the expense of the Czech Republic. It's bronze again in 2011. Oh, that's just wide after another beautiful, flowing, sweeping move. Ayase Oeda just couldn't get enough purchase on that header. But how slick was that Japan attacking again? Super move. Brazil cut open. The ball clicked across for the diving header just wide. Already a sense of frustration about Brazil. Gustavo Guitano penalised there. Felt he did nothing wrong, or that it was a 50 50 at best. You look at that though, and his argument falls down. Goro Mitoma. Oh, another good ball in for Ueda. Just couldn't get a nick on it. But he's a danger. They are say Oeda. Gold medal match. Still goalless. Worked out to Kono. Yamahara causing all sorts of problems. Now Yamakawa steps out from the back and look at the overlapper. Three in the box here for Japan. Cut back and wide. That's two very good chances they've missed now. One from Ayase Oeda, created by Rayo Hatate, and then Hatate on the end of that move just stretches a little too much. Fullbacks, though, getting forward as they do. Basically, extra attackers if uh, the midfield player can just slow the play down a little bit, put their foot on the ball, wait for the runner. Problematic to deal with. Tanaka's header. Gathered by Eduardo Luis. Not an obvious advantage there, so play pulled back. The early ball into the box, and it demands that Brazil defend. Was sliced by Rama Mrezende. Corner. Hey, hey. Kono takes it. And then over hits the cross somewhat. Tanaka had positioned himself at the back post. Keep plugging on. This competition began on the 2nd of July. South Korea beat Uruguay. Italy got their uh, opening day victory over the Mexicans. That was here at the Areki and featured one of the goals of the tournament so far. Brilliant free kick from Ricardo Serena. Brazil didn't play their first match until the 5th of July. That was the 1-0 draw with the French. They were leading for long periods as well after 
Caetano. Gustavo Caetano had given them an eighth minute lead, finally pegged back 16 minutes from time, and then came the 3 0 victory over the South Africans. Atate pushes it through. There's the overlapper again in Kono. If he can clip the ball to the far post, only half away, taking it away from Kuro Mitoma. Yuki Yamamoto now. Brazil holding their line. Japan finally stray offside. But they are dictating the pace, the Japanese. Again, it's a good decision. It's not every time we've been able to say that when a flag's been raised in this competition for an offside. For once, there's room in the midfield. It was Gustavo Kitano who clipped it over the top. Caio Mascarenas. Seven is Eduardo Luis. And Japan back at their stations. Gustavo Kitano clips it over. Mitoma with the intervention. And also Ueda will chase down Raman Rezende here. He's going to pick out Wanderson de Cunha. Still barely a touch there for Rafael dos Santos. Perhaps that frustration is uh, demonstrated in the foul there. Frustrating match so far for Brazil. Should be the goalkeepers. Yeah, he read it well. Japan began their campaign and like Brazil a week ago yesterday beat Brazil's great rivals South America Argentina by three goals to nil it's an own goal in that they also a way to score two Dos Santos in behind that was his first chance to really run and try and latch onto a pass great service up to him thus far indeed Brazil have barely had the ball in truth Mitoma was the intended target of the diagonal Recently loose that from Takamine. Wanderson de Cunha just nods it on for Dos Santos, but he won't get there. Kotaka Nakamura now. Mitoma waits for the runner, gets it as well. Rayon Yamahara drills it across very early and low. Well defended. Nakamura. So it comes through Tanaka. Look at the way they fan out again. Mitoma. Tanaka gave it away. Difficult for Brazil at the moment to build up any kind of momentum. Raman Resende back at walking pace. Victor Costa into the feet there of Luis. Nicked away from him by Hataka Nakamura. I never.
inevitably Brazil were going to have a spell of possession, but that's what they've done with it. A clean pass under very little pressure by Gustavo Guitano there to Ayase Ueda. Super triangles, little movement there as they pass their way out of trouble. Great angles and combination play, and that's a clear body check. Yeah, I don't think the referee has any alternative there but to get the card out. Sometimes the movement of these Japanese players is too much for the opposition, and it was there for Raman Rosendek. Well, he'll know that that's not worth complaining about. What on earth is the referee supposed to do here? Just a response of someone who's scared witless, really, at the technique of the opposition. That is the case with this Japanese team. The one thing you can say if you're playing them is they can't keep the pace up for the full 90 minutes. Often. It's all about weathering the storm. Yamamoto takes it short. Danaka. Yamakawa. Mahara. Yamamoto. Tanaka. Brazil push up. Mitoma. Well, Brazil are just sitting back now. Clever play, really, from the Mamede's team. Problem solving within the match and just inviting Japan on. You just sit back like that. You Say to the opposition, try and pick your way through. Uh, it's difficult for Japan really to sort of attack with any kind of speed, and that's how they like to hit you. That's how they get the overlapping fullbacks involved. Finally, there's the long diagonal for Mitoma. Look at Yamahara running on. And well, this is the way you turn the momentum around. That's exactly what Brazil are doing right now. It might not be particularly pretty, but. Certainly effective in terms of stifling Japan's quick, slick passing game. The last time the Brazilian men's team were in the frame for a medal, it was 2015 in Guangzhou. I guess he beat them for the bronze. Third, fourth place playoff on penalties, 7 6 in uh, Korea that year. Brazil's last bronze, 2011 in Shenzhen. Beat the Russian Federation 2 0. The year Japan won it. Beat Great Britain in the 
final. Victor Costa. All very, very congested and cramped. Yamamoto just rolls his studs over the ball. Gives himself a yard of space to play it forward. So the, the throw in is one off Ramon the Resende. Shunta Tanaka. Tomoki Takemine. Great run this by Kazuya Kono. The end product wasn't there though. Kurumitoma. Yamahara with the cross. Rosende there, that should be the goalkeeper's. Yeah. Reads the flight. Crucially not allowing it to bounce. Rule number one inside the penalty box there. And Japan's success in the, the men's competition, the men's football at the Universia translates into the top three finish in each of the last five editions. Seven of the last eight. Extraordinary commitment to developing the Universia teams. Yamamoto, now Yamakawa hits it long. Mitoma. First touch may have been heavy. Allowing Victor Costa to clear it, but it's still Japan ball. The possession stats will be off the scale. In favor of Japan, half time. Takamine who plays it back. At the moment, though, the possession is not getting them anywhere. Tetsushi Yamakawa fails to clear the first line of defence. There's not a single shot on target yet from the Brazilians. Remember that one that Eduardo Luis blazed over the top. Just can't get the ball off the Japanese. That's into Ayase Ueda. And off the post, offside. Goodness me, he pulled that down on a sixpence, so just spun it past Matthias Kaiser. Now then, this is going to spark up all those debates, isn't it, about what exactly is offside. He was leaning forward. I think his, his, his feet, his starting foot anyway, was half a yard, maybe just a little under half a yard, but... I suppose clear and obviously it was spotted by the referee's assistant, but there's not much margin for error there. Of course, even if a piece of the attacker is offside when the ball is played, that is the decision we talk about when goal line technology needs to be employed to prove whether a, a ball is all the way over a goal line for a goal. Perhaps that should be the argument for offsides as well. The whole of the player needs to be obviously offside. Mitoma running into traffic. There's Eduardo Luis. Oh, it's a poor first touch. They're absolutely rattled with the speed of Japan's attacking player, Brazil. Familiar answer who brings it clear. He just can't break the line at all. Finding it increasingly difficult to even move over halfway at the moment, Brazil. But no doubt the South American side and their coach, Ariel Mamade, will be aware that Japan will fade. Another cross whipped in from the overlapping player, wide right. Nakamura and Kazuya on the right-hand side. Yamahara and Mitoma here down the left. The three and the seven down the left, and the two and the 14 on the right-hand side for Japan. 
Davis into Cunha, but that's nodded on to no one in particular. Kazuya Kono looking for Mitoma with the diagonal again. play that from Yamamoto the wait is in and drills another chance wide well one by one they're creating these chances one by one they're missing them Ayase Oeda with the latest squander they're taking up a very good position here and for once it stayed on side I think that's Alex Costa just about playing him on oh it's raised a layer of paint off the side of the post None from none in terms of the shooting from Brazil. Shots to shots on target, so they've not even credited Eduardo Luiz's attempt, is it? A genuine shot on goal. It came within the opening 12 minutes, and that's the closest Brazil have come. I mean, even a, a set piece like this, even a free kick in the Japan half has been. Well, it hasn't happened, has it? So this is a luxury. such a crazy game that Brazil will probably end up scoring from this we shall see look at that flat line who's going to breach it for Brazil the shooting needs to be better we know all about the Samba boys and the shooting from distance not there is not quite following the free kick tradition horrible effort actually Gustavo Gaetano. So it's as you were, with Japan in possession, prompting and probing. And so it's Takamine's turn to try and embarrass the goalkeeper. Well, look at the firepower that they have on the bench. Daichi Hayashi and Kadama. Not really a case of the player coming in to offer them something different, really. There, there tends to be very little in the way of a plan B with the Japan. When plan A works, it looks very, very good indeed. The possession's there, but not the end product tonight. Cut out by Miliaransa, so rare wastage of possession. Up to Rafael dos Santos if he can hold it up. How quickly have Japan got back at their uh, defensive stations though. And the pace comes right down and this is the sort of situation where Brazil need the guile and the craft and the movement of Japan to well, inflict that kind of attack on them. Uh, Miliaransa. Has to come square rather than forward. Wanderson de Cunha. Oh, that's a good turn. Wanderson de Cunha. And then toe pokes the attempt. First real bit of flair we've seen from anyone in yellow. Super first touch and then the spin. But he didn't quite have the confidence to take it on there. So the closing moments of the first half at the Stadio Arecchi in Salerno, which has been the hub of the men's football competition, the Napoli 2019 Universiad. <laughs> Yamahara helps it on, it will trickle through. The first half here. 
in the men's gold medal football final that has been utterly, completely dominated by the blue samurai of Japan, but no killer blow just yet. Brazil have been up against it. They've soaked up all the pressure. Ayase Ueda has squandered a couple of fine chances for Japan. Despite all the pressure and despite all the possession, there has been no breakthrough. It is nil-nil here in the gold medal match in the men's football at Napoli 2019.
second half of the men's football gold medal match here at the 2019 Universiad about to get underway then. It's goalless between Japan and Brazil. Japan have been utterly dominant in the first half. Not found the breakthrough. Brazil reduced to just two wild efforts from long distance and divine intervention maybe coming to their aid in the uh, second half we shall see there have been 75 goals scored in the uh, 25 matches so far in this summer Universiad men's football competition away we go we've only ever had one goalless final in the uh, men's football Sheffield in the UK back in uh, 1991 South Korea and the Netherlands couldn't be separated it went to penalties the first of the three penalty shootout deciders to determine the winners of the men's football at the Universiad South Korea won it 5-4 on that occasion Japan won on penalties after a three-all draw with the Italians in 2005 and then French in 2013. Free kick from the off. There's a, a trip right at the start of the uh, second half, a, a stoppage after just seconds of it. Well, this ball is uh, Brazilian. He's headed a, a little behind Resende. Yeah, he tries to nod it down for Miliorance. So, can Brazil up it a bit? It's all about establishing a rhythm of your own. Japan with their compact mobile play and way of playing. Sent long over the top for IRC Ueda there. A couple of chances for Ueda in that first 45. Second of them probably the best. He managed to put away from Victor Costa. A light-footed shot which he dragged across the face. Skip over there from Kazuya Kono. Again, another panic Brazil defence. Has to get it behind for the corner. Tiago Pina there. You could just... Hear the footsteps of Mitoma bearing down on him. Play the corner short. Much like they admit defeat when they elevate the ball into the box. Just love to play through you. The Japanese, as we know, going for title number seven. Never lost the Universiad men's football final. Six times they've been in it, six times they've won it. And the semi final record is, uh, or rather, the uh, bronze medal match record is impressive. They've not managed to win the semi. Only lost one. And four appearances in the third, fourth place playoff. Three bronzes, 2009, 2013, 2015. And that single defeat in the bronze medal match came back in 1985. At home in Kobe when China beat them. <laughs> Still very warm at the uh, Stadio Arecchi in Salerno. 
a couple of free kicks being won. So Brazil just trying to gain a little bit of territory. They'll take anything they can get at the moment. It was Rafael dos Santos wrestling with Shunta Danica. Mascarenas, oh, that's a good ball into Dos Santos. First sight of goal for the Brazilian striker. But in the air, that's not his strength. It really isn't, but a super cross in. And he's stolen half a yard on the defender there. He got away effectively from Kazuya Kono. So there's encouragement. There's a, a sign of life here in Brazil now. Five minutes into the second half. Always too much to expect the Japanese pace to be maintained. And with the attacking fullback Wanderson de Cunha playing effectively as the second striker today and I say the winner gets in fabulous challenge out comes the goalkeeper to claim it it's a constant thought in the side I say away that just making the point about Wanderson de Cunha started at right back in the semi-final and he was the, the starting point of an awful lot of Brazilian attacks Santos, Santos tries to flick the ball on this is Wanderson de Cunha and the flag up yeah, first combination play of any sort there between Rafael de Santos and Wanderson de Cunha. So there's the flick, and that's a player who's not used maybe to playing in that central striking role from Wanderson de Cunha. Because he wasn't kind of merely offside there, he was a good three yards off. So Wataka Nakamura now. Tetsushi. Yamakawa for his Shunta Danaka. Pace is low. Japan looking to pick it up with Yamakawa. Nice bit of bite to the match now. 14 is Kazuya Kono. He plays it in behind and the flag up there on Ayase Ueda. Uh, seven offsides in the first half for Japan. And uh, we're away again. That in the second half, it's a shame actually that uh, the attacking players can't quite read the line a little bit better. It's incredibly frustrating. Mascarenas there on the left-hand side. Now Gustavo Quintano, good hit there. Nice sight for the keeper. Koto Atabe able to save it. Better, better. And it will give Brazil a big, big lift That Gustavo hit it superbly, swerving away, but just not in time, actually, and not having the sufficient bend to beat Abe. But... A massive improvement on those two long-range efforts we saw from both 
Itano, and his colleague in the first half. Now then, that should be a penalty, and is. It was a terrific run through the middle by Koro Mitoma. Oh, the pace of Japan's wide players and the forward, Ayase Ueda, has been terrifying them all match. Second yellow card means a red for Ramon Resende. And a huge double blow here for the Brazilians nine minutes into the second half. Resende sees red. Double punishment as well on the cards, really, with the penalty. Oh. Goru Mitoma, that's the opening they've been looking for for the whole match. It's an obvious, it's a blatant trip. It's the speed at which they move. Just the, the millisecond, the split second out. And Resende, who was booked in the first half, uh, can have few complaints in truth. It had been coming the way that Japan try and play. So, big moment this in the gold medal match. Japan's dominance. Might be turned into the opening goal. It's in. Beautifully taken by Asai Oeda. Slotted home with such confidence. And it means an awful lot for the side looking for Universiad title number seven. You can't decry them that. You can't begrudge them the opening goal. Utterly, utterly dominant in the first half. And now 10 minutes into the second, the breakthrough they deserve. Ayase Ueda, he scored two on the opening day against Argentina. Back on the score sheet with the, the most significant goal of the lot in this gold medal final. So Brazil are playing the rest of the match with 10 men and it might need a, a bit of tweaking here from the coach Ariel Mamede. Right, Carlos Madson about to come on. There's a little touch of Rio Hitate, they're looking to strike while the iron's hot. Slung wide. You know, wait for their moment to bring Madsen on. Desperately important that Brazil don't concede another quickly here. There goes Millie Aransa. Quite good to have the pace there. Now then, Millie Aransa is blatantly tripped. Itaka Nakamura there. Madsen comes on. Thiago Pina has had very little impact really on the right hand side of the Brazilian midfield. And nor any of his colleagues really. Such is the way Japan kill you softly. Played in by Eduardo Luis. Again, even the defensive header is controlled and steered nicely. There goes the onrusher. Ball played to the furthest forward player there, Rayo Hatate. Yamakawa. Fourteen is Kazuya Kono. Yamakawa sends it all the way back to Shunta Tanaka. Yuki Yamamoto just threads it backwards. Yeah, they're very controlled and precious with the ball of Japan. So 
then the little give and go. That time it was from Rion Yamahara. Comes into the central area again with Tomoki Dakamine. Katoya Kono. The overlapper on the right side. Ataka Nakamura wearing two. Kono tries to play it through. Yeah, just a, a little grab of the shirt there from the goal scorer, Ayase Ueda. Brazil won't crack Japan open like that. Long ball, which is meat and drink there for Shunta Tanaka. Tomoki Takamine now. Accurate pass to Ataka Nakamura. Mariel Mamade, it seems, is readying another player on. Yeah, the forward, by the looks of things, Alex de Alcantara, who dropped out of the starting 11 today. Ataka Nakamura, good cross. Strong fists on it, though, from Mateus Kaiser. Koro Mitoma, referee wanted again to allow the advantage to unfold. So here's Kono. Nakamura. Yamamoto. Mitoma. Checks back into Rayo Hatate. Emilio Ransa cuts the ball back inside. A strong challenge that from Tomoki Takamine. There is an extra edge of steel about this Japan team at this at Universiad. They're not afraid to just mix it, enjoy the, the rough and tumble. Alex de Alcantara for Wanderson de Cunha. And I think that's a shame. I'm not sure Wanderson de Cunha has been used in his best role today. He's an auxiliary centre forward. So Alex comes on. Pushed up alongside Rafael dos Santos. As Brazil chase a gold medal final. Now, while there's life, there's hope. And while it's just 1 0. Brazil will have plenty of hope. Taka Nakamura has drifted all the way across to Koru Mitoma. The right midfielder is bending the crossfield pass to his opposite number on the left there. Japan playing their very own version of Tiki Taka. Shots deflected. Goalkeeper caught in no man's land. Put it there, I see a way for chasing it down and watching the dropping ball like a hawk. Actually managed to cut it across there, but no one gambled, no one read it. They're in behind again, Iweda square, comes past Iweda. Too far beyond it. Azuya Kono as well, despite their best attempts of Ataka Nakamura. All drifts out of play. Throw in here for Brazil. Eduardo Luis, just not catching any breaks at all. Kind of any sort of misstep is being punished. Ayase Ueda! 2-0 Japan. Two super strikes from Ayase Ueda. Double bubble. And Japan are on their way to another gold medal in the men's football at the Universiade. It was a super piece of control. First touch was good, second touch was even better. No chance for Mateus Kaiser. And Ariel Mamadi's team are staring down the barrel now. It's a painful first ever appearance in the Universiade final. Super through ball, expert control, and the sweetest of finishes.
lovely 2-0 Slide rule pass as well from uh, Rayo Hatate. And all the hard work is now paying off for the Blue Samurai. Difficult for Brazil before. The situation could well have become unassailable now. Played through by Eduardo, or rather to Eduardo Luis. It will drift through for Koto Abe. One time he's been called upon to block the shot from Gustavo Gitano. He did the job. There's a real sense of togetherness about all Japan teams. There goes Ataka Nakamura, full of running still. And the challenge had to be put in and was by Melia Ransa. Corner. Well, this is a, a Brazil side that are being run ragged. And the expressions on the faces tell you exactly that story. left footer to send it in Kono goalkeeper committed himself was left exposed there and the header came over the top from Shunta Tanaka Victor Costa will try and get them moving. Better pass. There goes Alex. by Matthias Kaiser and Takamine winning the header a really clever and cute play from Rayo Atate picked up by Yuki Yamamoto Everyone's getting a kick. Tetsushi Yamakawa. It really is like Tiki Taka at times, isn't it? Takamine, the first port of the first point of the attack. They are just screening the defence. Yamahara. Yamamoto. So the spare player is Mitoma here. Did you see Takamine drifting into that hole. Yamamoto and then Ayase Ueda. Ueda is on a hat trick now. It's taken on by Kazuya Kono. Nakamura looks in another strong cross. Too heavy for his teammates, but that's nice applause from the crowd here in the Stadio Arecchi in Salerno because they appreciate a good team when they see it. And there's no doubt that Japan are going to be worthy winners of this gold medal should they see this one out. 
I see absolutely no reason why they shouldn't. So blunted have the Brazilians been. Safely back to Kotoabe by Shunta Tanaka. That left sided combination will try and work it again. Yamahara for Mitoma. Lovely ball across there for Rayo Hatate. Goodness me. The Blue Samurai have sharpened the sword in the second half and down comes another devastating blow. Rio Hatate, the little magician with a captain's goal to make it 3-0. Brilliantly done. They're picking the Brazilians apart. What a pass and what a finish. He takes that ball in his stride. Just forced a little wide here, but no problem. The shot steered beneath Mateus Kaiser. And Japan now are cruising towards another gold medal. Just a lesson in why and how not to panic. Just keep playing your way. Three goals in 14 minutes. It's the quality of the goals as well. That's why Japan are always easy on the eye at whatever age level. And whether you're watching a, a Japan men's team or a Japan women's team, FIFA age level event or Universiade Olympics, which of course is under 23. And this is a big signpost on the road to Tokyo 2020 bronze medal back in 1968 for the uh, Japanese squad is the marker really but they'll want to surpass it at home next summer continuing to run rings around the Brazilians who have no answer Brazil just can't get it away and there's well, no belief really that they can hurt Japan and they might well be right to think that. This has been a fabulous performance. They're going to finish on the podium in the men's football for the sixth straight Universiade Japan. In that run, there have been three gold medals. What a run as well. Whenever they reach the final, they win it. They just can't stop them when they get to that final hurdle. Brazil back to ball watching, really. Comfortable and cool and composed. Back it comes to Koto Abe. Otoka Nakamura. Yuki Yamamoto. Toe end in from Vashoncelos. Tactics board. Well, that can go in the bin now. Tomoki Takamine. Otaka Nakamura. Yuki Yamamoto. A little drop of the shoulder and then the push forward from Tomoki Takamine. Can't find Koru Mitoma. Never mind. It's just a joy to watch a team who are absolutely at the top of their game, full of confidence just playing to their strengths.
Japan still hungry. Switched on as well defensively. Alex introduced to try and spice up the Brazilian attack, but many attempts rather resemble putting an umbrella up in a hurricane, such has been the Japanese dominance tonight. Otaka Nakamura. Time for a drinks break. Twenty-five past ten, local time. Don't think we're going to need penalty shootout here, though, are we? Got it, Mitoma. There's the overlapper. A bit of respite for Brazil. Mitoma just feeds it back to Shunta Tanaka. Well, we've had good Japan performances in Universiad finals as well, but nothing quite as sweeping as this. And against a, a side of the caliber of the Brazilians as well, there were high hopes that they could do it here, that they could complete the medal set. Along with the FIFA World Cup, the under 20 World Cup, the under 17 World Cup. The Olympic gold, and they'd have loved here the, the World Student Games gold, the, the Universiade trophy. It's not to be, though. At least they will have their best medal in this competition, beating those bronzes from 99 and 2011. Less than 13 minutes to go. Of course, Japan may have something to think about if Fashion Salos can pick out a colleague here. And that was an awkward coming together. The referee's been lenient towards Japan. Oh, the goalkeeper has to save. And it's in. Brazil back at the races. Thumped home by Eduardo Luiz after hesitancy and the first moment of panic and uncertainty at the back for Japan. Well, are we going to see a comeback? Certainly going to change the uh, psychology now. Well, that was the striker's touch, a little bit heavy by Ayase Oeda. He couldn't clear it properly, just changes the angle of the uh, shot goalwards. And from that point on, they were backtracking. First shot on target. And it's in the back of the net for Brazil. So, Luiz turns the lights on. Kazuya Kono. Does that hurt Japan? Nakamura. Takamine. Just slow it down again with uh, Tomoki Takamine. Now Tetsushi Yamakawa. And not just in this competition, it happens so, so often, doesn't it? <laughs> Just don't let themselves go until they really have to. And Brazil very much found themselves in that situation tonight. 
last found the extra 10% needed, the extra bit of pace, the extra bit of aggression required, but only when they were three down. Japan, though, from that kickoff, very adept at re establishing their rhythm. Itaka Nakamura. Nice one touch play. Nakamura holds it up. Oh, and spins round Vashon Salas as well. Gets it back to Kazuya Kono. And Daisy Cutter. Well fielded by Matthias Kaiser. Yamakawa, Nakamura, super run in by Ueda, who's on his hat trick. Oh, that is absolutely fantastic. The run and the finish, no nonsense. He has pummeled that past Matthias Kaiser. So Japan were wounded with the concession of that goal to Luis in Brazil, which got the South Americans back into this gold medal final. That's how to respond. Ayase Oeda in for the triple. It's a thumping finish. And Japan on course for a thumping win in the gold medal match. Brilliant hat trick. Japan up to four now. on course to be the biggest win in the Universiad final now since 1987 in the Soviet Union's 5-0 triumph over South Korea. And the Italians they beat South Korea 3-0 four years ago in Guangzhou. But, uh, no sides got beyond three goals in the final since that Soviet Union victory. The attitude really is something to admire, let alone the technique and skill level. The motivation too and desire to go on and want to keep playing. Well, perhaps now Naoya Matsumoto feels a little more, bit more comfortable and ready and able to to bring on some substitutions Rion Yamahara run himself flat tonight brilliant performance down the left hand side combining with Koru Mitoma so he's going to be replaced now by Ryotaro Sunoda from the University of Tsukuba each other well from that establishment. Two university teammates and now gold medal winners as well. Average age of this uh, Japan squad, by the way. In 20 years, six months, and about what we see in the average age of the, the majority of squads in the the men's competition here at the Universiad. Japan's victories in previous finals have been relatively tight. Not today. Important intervention because Hatate would have been in on the through ball again. First victory in uh, Fukuoka at home in 95, 2 0 over South Korea. Single goal victories over uh, Ukraine and France. 
Ukraine victory in 2001 in Beijing. Chinese Taipei two years ago when the French were defeated by a single goal. They did beat Great Britain by two goals to nil in Shenzhen eight years ago. Final in Izmir 2005 against the Italians went to penalties, which they won 3 2. That two years after they'd beaten the Italians 3 2 in regulation time in Daegu in 2003. The heaviest victories came in the opening years of the football at the Universidad. Mexico beat Uruguay 5 3 in. Mexico City in 79 and there was that uh, five goal haul for the Soviets and Zagreb in 87 Takuro Koneko left sided attacker now will be on the pitch so he hopes when they can celebrate the gold medal Kazuya Kono, though, has been super tonight. And for Brazil, final rolls of the dice. Jao Vieira. Eighty goals now for the tournament in this the 26th match. It might even be more. Rio Hatate. He times those runs so well in the guise of so many capable attacking midfielders we've seen down the years. That's how he got his goal tonight, running from deep. Being fed with a, a delightful pass through. First touch was solid. Second was clinical. Takuro Kaneko just slotted in. As the latest diminutive pacey player who can play out wide. And in comes the cross from Nakamura. And the curled effort is just wide as they look to nail a, another pin through Brazil. Wasn't far away at all from Mitoma there. And you can't blame them all for wanting a, a piece of the pie. So just as a reminder then, the uh, top four in the men's football at the Universiade Napoli 2019 has been decided today. But South Korea claiming fifth place, best of the rest outside the, the medal matches, if you will. They beat the French. Ukraine finished seventh after beating the Republic of Ireland by two goals to one. Ninth went to Mexico, they beat Uruguay 3 0. South Africa 10th, having beaten Argentina. Hatate. No one has been able to get near the Japanese. That's the story of this Universiade. Closest they came to being knocked out. The penalty shootout at the end of the semi-final. Italy getting that late dramatic equaliser and then the Viteridi missing the final kick in the shootout. Just allowing Japan to run riot and celebrate and enjoy their fortune because a lot of the time that's what a shootout is of course. 
you just look at the uh, matches that they've been able to dominate and win in normal time. Argentina were beaten 3-0, then the Russian Federation dispatched 4-1. A 2-0 win in the quarterfinals over South Korea. And now here, Brazil, who had such high hopes of this first ever gold medal in a, the first ever Universiade final. But uh, that was never happening, was it? Not with Japan in this mood. We'll have two extra minutes and then they can uncork the champagne. Kaneko tried the dribble. I just don't know the meaning of sitting on a lead. A long diagonal pass for Nakamura. Cross into the middle, out by Alex Costa. Tomoki Takamine, that's not one of his better contributions, but again, you can't begrudge him that. To a man, Japan, have been excellent tonight. So they'll join Ukraine as back-to-back -back winners, 2007-2009. Japan have done it before, they won three in a row, 2001, 2003 and 05. Building another dynasty in the men's football at the Universiade, the Blue Samurai. Hatate has been wonderful for them. Sets them clear again in the final 30 seconds. Ueda, the hat-trick hero, cuts inside and then lifts the shot too high. And this is the point where uh, we're at a boxing contest. The referee would call time. But we will see out the final few seconds of what has been an utterly dominant and hugely impressive display from Japan. It is back-to-back. Universiad titles. It is their seventh gold medal in the men's football at the World Student Games or the Universiad. That's five titles better than the uh, next contenders, Italy and Ukraine. And listen to the reception for Japan. This team of little magicians have run rings around Brazil here. They had a hat trick hero in Ayase Ueda. Reo Hatate, the captain on target again. They blitz Brazil, who had a consolation. That's all it was, I'm afraid, from Eduardo Luiz. Briefly gave them hope that they could claw back into this gold medal final. But Japan have just been too good. They've been the biggest winners in a men's Universiade final since the Soviet Union put five past South Korea back in 1987 in Zagreb. Here at Napoli 2019, Japan, Nippon have just been too good. They have blitzed Brazil and they have won the gold medal by a score of four goals to one. Brilliant, brilliant Japan.